ओके गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन विश यू ऑल अ वेरी हैप्पी दिवाली एंड दिस वीडियो इज डेडिकेटेड टू ऑल दी हेल्थ के प्रोफेशनल हु आर वर्किंग इन दिस फेस्टिव सीजन एंड सर्विंग द पेशेंट्स सो वन सच टीम कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ डॉक्टर अभी एंड डॉक्टर बेंजामिन एंड देर होल आई सी यू एंड इमरजेंसी डिपार्टमेंट टीम दे हैव सेंड अस ए केस दे मैनेज द केस एंड दे हैव सेंड अस फॉर शेयरिंग सो दैट वी कैन लर्न समथिंग फ्रॉम इट सो लेट्स गो टू द केस एंड सी वॉट वी कैन लर्न फ्रॉम इट ओके सो दिस इज द ई सी जी ऑफ ए सेवेंटी फाइव ईयर ओल्ड लेडी हु हैज़ ऑलरेडी अंडर गाउन सी ए बी जी इन द पास्ट एंड फॉलोड बाय दैट शी ऑल्सो अंडर वेंट एनजोप्लास्टी अगेन फॉर एनजाइनल सिम्टम्स फ्यू ईयर्स लेटर एंड नाउ शी हैज़ प्रेजेंटेड विद शॉर्टनेस ऑफ ब्रेथ फॉर लास्ट थ्री फोर आवर्स एंड ऑन एडमिशन शी इज हिमोडाइनमिकली स्टेबल बी पी वॉज वन फिफ्टी बाय नाइन्टी देर फाइन क्रैप्स इन द चेस सेचुरेशन सो आर फाइन शी वॉज कॉन्शियस इनफ and this was the ecg so there are many lectures and many videos and many courses available on the net and all other many organizations which provide the ecg training but what we want to learn from this icu cases is we want to uh, learn the approach when we solve the ecgs ecg was, was my weakest point when i was doing my fellowships thanks to my teachers and the key is to practice still i am learning but let's see what we can figure out from this ecg so grossly looking what we are able to see that this is an tachycardia that we can make out the heart rate is uh, to difference between two rr complex is two boxes two large boxes so rate is somewhere around 150 so this is a tachycardia heart rate above 100 uh, that's fine and grossly looking i don't see typical features of uh, any stemi or st elevation so some some this is the t wave not the st depressions so i don't see new features of acute coronary as per this ecg maybe we can repeat it tropa a few hours later but grossly looking it's a tachycardia so whenever you see a tachycardia you need to think where it is originating so it's a conduction problem so where it is originating it is uh, i have told you in the previous uh, cases that rhythm can originate from either from the sa node so it will have a p wave it will be upright in uh, lead 2 and inverted in uh, v lead v1 then it can originate in the av node junctional rhythm or it can originate in the ventricles it can also originate in the atrium other than the sa node in which we call those rhythms as atrial rhythms means atrial flutter atrial uh, tachycardia or atrial fibrillations like that so how uh, this rhythm travels from uh, atria to ventricles is through av node there is one pos more possibility how it can travel is through a accessory pathway so Uh, we call is wp wp syndrome so before solving this ecg let's see one figure so this is a very wonderful figure i have taken from uh, this journal of anesthesia education british journal of i have given the link in the description you can go and uh, read the whole article it's a beautiful article so you see this is atrial flutter what is happening the uh, rhythm usually start from sa node but here what is happening somewhere around the tight uh, speed wall there becomes a loop and the rhythm gets continuous generated so it it saw tooth appearance you find in ecg in a scenario complex and there is a loop here so it is atrial flutter now what happens in atrial fibrillation there are multiple foci in atria multiple chaotic sort of rhythms some it's originating somewhere uh, you know both the atria, uh, atria and then one of them travels to the av node so it's a narrow complex irregular irregular rhythm in multi focal atrial tachycardia is there at few few places like in diwali we have crackers somewhere so uh it, the p wave is originating in multiple areas and it's not so fast but it will have a p wave and it will traverse to the av node but the morphology of p wave will be different in in, in 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 with each rhythm and you need to have three different p morphologies this is one of the criteria and varying rr rr interval varying pr interval uh and it varies rr interval also so this is multifocal atrial tachycardia this is focal atrial tachycardia means 
rhythm is not originating from SA node, it is originating in the atria but at some other place. So we call this focal atrial tachycardia. Rhythm is originating here, P wave will be different other than SA node, means not between, it may not be inverted in V1 and upright in lead 2, but it will originate from the atria and then it travels. Now what we are interested in this ECG is this either it's an uh, AVRT or uh, either it's AVRT or AVNRT. So by AV nodal reentrant tachycardia, N means node. What is happening? You all must be knowing the reentry circuit. So AV node has some one a fast pathway and the uh, slow pathway, and because of uh, premature beat, it uh, leads to um, AVNRT. So what is happening here? The loop is formed around the AV node, and the and it is continu continuously getting conducted through AV node. So you in AVNRT, the node is involved. AVN. This N means node is involved. While in AVRT, what is happening, you have an accessory pathway somewhere other than the AV node. You can see there is an accessory pathway. So what is happening, the loop is not formed purely at the AV node, the loop is formed along the accessory pathway. So rhythm can travel from the ventricles to the AV node or from the atria to the ventricle. So it can create a loop like this which is called orthodromic or you can make a loop like this which is called antidromic. So it is due to, so whenever we say AVRT that means there is an accessory pathway, whenever we see an AVNRT it means a nodal is invo node is involved. So if you have irregular supraventricular tachycardia it could be atrial fibrillation or multifocal atrial tachycardia, the difference between these two will be, it will have a chaotic baseline, irregular, irregular rhythm and P wave will be absent, you will not be able to find P waves in the, in the um, uh, ECG. While in multifocal atrial tachycardia, you will have P waves, you will have P waves, so different etiologies, you will have uh, more than three uh, morphologies, you will have varying PR interval, and you will have, uh, it will also be a regular rhythm. So, irregular supraventricular tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, a multifocal atrial tachycardia, regular supraventricular tachycardia, it could be atrial flutter, focal atrial tachycardia, sinus tachycardia is also uh, supraventricular tachycardia and AVNRT, AVNRT means AV node where the loop is formed around the AV node and AVRT means along the accessory pathway a loop is formed. So now we'll see what is happening with our patient, we'll go back. So it's a narrow complex tachycardia we have found out, it's a tachycardia rate is somewhere around 150, it's a narrow complex. Now we need to see the P wave whether it is originating from sinus or uh, other than sinus or AV note like that whether we able to find out P wave or not. We will see lead V1 and lead 2. In V1 if you can see I think this is the P wave, this is the P wave, this is the P wave and this is the PI interval so I am able to appreciate the P wave in lead 2 I am not able to appreciate but I think this is this notch you can see this notch, I think this is a buried P wave, that's what I can appreciate. If you have any other comments, you can post in the comment section, but I could, I would label this as a P wave. So we have P wave there, P wave there and it is conducting uh, to uh, uh, from the AV node to the um, uh, ventricles. So it's definitely uh, narrow complex tachycardia having P wave. So what we are dealing with either uh, atrial, focal atrial tachycardia or atrial flutter or AV RT or AV NRT. Now QRS complex is narrow so usually in uh, AV and AV RT where you have an accessory pathway it can have some signs of um, uh, delta wave or slightly broad QRS complex but which I don't see here which I don't see in any of the leads which I don't see in any of the leads okay so this could be AV NRT AV nodal reentrant tachycardia so and the clue is rate is somewhere around 150. Flutter, I don't think could. Flutter have sawtooth appearance, but 
rate is somewhere 180 and not classical sawtooth appearance waves flutter waves are not there so the both the residents finally concluded that this is a narrow complex regular tachycardia p wave present and this is avnrt so what they decided that they will uh, give adenosine to this patient and this is the video they gave adenosine important thing is adenosine it is very important to differentiate between av nodal reentrant tachycardia and avrt because what because what will happen adenosine will block this av node adenosine will block this av node so in case of av and rt it is fair enough that it will block the av node uh, and uh, there will be the the, the reentrant circuit will be block, uh, broken and uh, then normal rhythm can be restored but in avrt if this node gets blocked the rhythm from atria can travel at a very fast rate from this accessory pathway and it can lead to vfib vtac vtac and v, uh, ventricular fibrillation and patient can collapse so adenosine should not be given in av rt so it is very important to differentiate they saw so both the residents also saw the previous ecg of the patient and there was no um, uh, delta wave in that so they concluded that this is avnrt and gave adenosine when adenosine needs to be give it should be given when with an iv push 6 mg and then immediately uh, it is given in the proximal veins cubital veins or external jugular veins or through central line it should be given with the push uh, followed by 20 cc uh, push and uh, hang, hand should be raised so that it reaches the heart uh, uh, very fast because it's a very short half life and let's see you should also be ready for cpr because it can at times have a sudden bloody bloody arrest to the patients also so with all the precaution they gave this um, uh, adenosine and let's see what is happened so it is a you see they started and they pushed uh, adenosine at this stage and you can see okay so you see there is a pause and the rhythm restored the re-entrance circuit at the AV node get uh, broken and you have P wave, normal QRS complex and the rhythm is restored and the patient became comfortable uh, after 30-45 minutes so, so, so it get restored okay so this is the ECG after 6 mg of IP push the rhythm was restored and there is some problem in, in, in the LA. I think LA is little bit dilated. You have uh, this is sinus rhythm inverted in V1 upright here. Uh, there could LA seems to be a little bit dilated. Okay, so a great work done by the team. So whenever you approach ECG, always imagine imagine what is going into the heart, where the rhythm is originating, what is happening in the conduction system, where we are st uh, study, uh, looking at, whether the rhythm is originating in the SA node or atria or AV node or accessory pathway and all or the ventricles, how it is getting conducted. That's the way you will enjoy solving ECG. I'm also learning by uh, sharing with you all. So. Uh, again a fantastic case sent to us and seeing in the live environment and con uh, converting the rhythm from um, AV and RT to a sinus one it's a really good feeling so once again wish you all happy and prosperous Diwali again lots and lots of thanks to all the healthcare workers who are working in this festive season do um, keep sharing your comments your uh, cases with us we we'll love to um, learn from that. Thank you.